it is with great um, pain in my heart and great jealousy that I must hand you over to Jamie and the surprise. <laughs> Hello, everybody. On our live safari, I would like to introduce you to three identical little lion cubs and their mom. Our new members of the Inkahuma Pride, they've been hiding out on Torchwood. We've been patiently waiting for them to appear. And there you go. The first proper sighting of the Inkahuma cubs after months and months of the sort of the chaos in the lion dynamics and watching the tragedies of the Inkahuma pride unfold to see these three little faces staring across at us well it just doesn't get better than this does it Brian nope. and I'm so glad that we could share this moment with all of you how absolutely precious are they at about five weeks of age still with their little spots <laughs> somebody's gone to sleep imagine that you are all as thrilled and excited as we are oh. breakfast time Oh no, whoopsie, whoopsie, whoopsie. Sliding off mum. And that is why we had to leave the other lions. And that is why we had to leave the elephants. So now you guys can understand a little bit about my excitement. Oh, these two ones are so dozy. They're falling asleep sitting up. Oh, this is just too precious. <laughs> Almost. Even the smallest obstacles seem pretty large when you're only five weeks old. Look at how spotted they still are. Whoops! Almost, almost. Come on, up you get. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm doing that thing I do when I see young cubs where I forget how to talk and I just giggle incoherently. But they're incredible. This is absolutely incredible. Well done, clever girl. Hey, here we go. The lioness that we knew had cubs. Oh, and what a brood it is. The first time we are properly seeing lion cubs from the Mkuhuma Pride in a very long time. And this is what makes Safari Live so incredibly special. When we can follow a story from the end of one chapter oh, to the beginning of the next. I hope you've all got your screenshot fingers working hard because this is incredible. Clawing its way over mum. this constant playfulness we were talking about and eagerly anticipating oopsie <laughs> we have been looking forward to this moment for so long mum 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 oh she's gonna make life a bit more tricky What an 
absolute pleasure this has been. And guys, it just goes to show you, for those of you who are concerned about the, the den site itself and our impact on them, they are not concerned about our presence at all. This is so cool. This is awesome. The last time I saw lion cubs playing like this on Juma was a year ago with the Styx cubs. So much has changed since then. I'm just thinking, I think actually our view might be improved now that they're behind the bush by <laughs> feet in the air. Like going backwards a bit, but let's just settle here for now. Even if it is through the trees, we can still get an idea of what that little mischief's are up to. <laughs> Using mom as a jungle gym battering each other and this is what we were talking about that sort of constant play that lion cubs do with each other but oh, it's got its tail it's pulling it backwards by its tail <laughs> wow this isn't where I well, it, it is actually what we were planning for the morning. I just didn't expect it to actually happen quite so easily. And we have a huge thank you to say to Aubrey, by the way, who found them for us and called us in. And where are you going, little one? On an adventure. And the best part of this is, is that we have got so many more moments like this to look forward to. Oh, watching playful cubs tumbling over each other. At least one of the, at least one of the other Nkuma lionesses is pregnant or has given birth recently. And over the next few weeks we'll see the cubs coming together with the rest of the pride. And I couldn't be more excited about it. And hopefully the Birmingham boys remain the dominant males in this area and we get to watch these cubs grow up. Okay. There is another vehicle on its way. Because they are in a very easily accessible area, so we haven't gone off-road at all, for to reach them so what they are doing is they're opening it up as decision from the head guides they're opening it up to two vehicles provided that there's only obviously one engine on at a time and that we keep the distance that we currently have oh. and this playfulness developing the skills that they are going to need for the rest of their adult lives they're very fortunate to have siblings to practice with. Guys, I do just need to have a quick chat to Tax, who is in the other vehicle. I just want to know if he wants to... Oopsie! Oopsie! I just want to reach over and chat to him. Can you guys see from there? I think. Okay, guys, we're gonna just let. I'm just gonna move slightly. I'm actually gonna let 
Tax and his guests go ahead because we have had the most incredible view. So just hold on one moment. He's letting me, he's moving back so that I can move as well. We're just going to do some shuffling around. Hold on, let's see what Tax is going to do. Our page, while we do some repositioning and some shuffling around, we wanted to know if we know the sex of the cubs. And the answer is no, we don't. Um, we, we won't know for a little while yet, it's very difficult to see. Tax, you guys go ahead. Okay, since we have these guys to thank for our sighting, and it only stands to reason that we let them go a little bit ahead. So Paige, it's really, really difficult to tell the difference between a male and a female cub at this point, particularly with the view that we've had. We will get to observe them over the next few weeks and we will be able to tell. Their testicles haven't descended yet if there, if there are any males in that group, so it won't be immediately obvious. And then the, the males will start to get a little bit of fluffiness around their faces, but we'll just have to wait and see exactly what the final outcome is in terms of males, females. What we're really hoping for, to be completely honest, is in terms of supplementing the Nkuhuma Pride's numbers is females that will stay with the rest of the Pride for the rest of their lives. Of course, a young male is equally welcome, but I would very much like to see the Nkuhuma Pride go from strength to strength. Let's stop here for now. Uh, let's go forward a little bit for now so that Brian's got a view of the cub at the back. We will have a chance to spend more time with them in a moment. Obviously there are other people that want to get in and enjoy the sighting. Aqua, I haven't heard them making their adorable little squeals yet, but I have no doubt that they will at some point in the next few moments. They've got this, for those of you who are unfamiliar with lion cubs and who haven't, are not sure what Aqua's referring to, Lion cubs make this adorable sort of ow, ow sound. Don't want to make it too loudly because obviously I don't want to distract them or impact them in any way. It seems as though it might be time to settle down for now. Have a little bit of rest, of a rest in the sand after all of that playing. His mum watches on indulgently. Aretas, you're saying that these are your first lion cubs and that they have stolen your heart. Well, I don't think you're alone. I think that I'm so glad that we could bring this to all of you. We could share this moment with all of you watching across the world. You know, you really, you can't help but fall in love with them. <laughs> hmm. Oh, yummy. A little bit of elephant dung first thing in the morning. <laughs> How awesome is that? Look what I found. <laughs> I want it. I want that done. This is so amazing. Really, truly. <laughs> Absolutely incredible. Yes, absolutely. While we watch our lion cubs play and we compare them to our leopard cubs that we've been watching. And I agree with you totally. I do think that lion cubs play more than leopard cubs. I know that leopard cubs do play, but I think lion cubs play more. And I think that is because 
the li leopards are destined to be solitary versus the lions which are destined to be social cats and who knows what lies in these clubs futures imagine if it's a group of three males <laughs> with the Birmingham and Nkuhuma genetics the Nkuhumas are big lionesses a coalition of three males would be a powerful thing or it might be three, oh, who knows, I'm speculating now, I can't help it. This is just too awesome for words. Guys, I just need to get onto the Game Drive channel. As I said, there are lots of people that would like to enjoy this moment. And as you can see, it's having no impact on the behavior of the cubs or the mom. Henry for Jamie. Are uh, you on standby one for the Zangala? Copy that. Uh, taxis here, it is a two vehicle lock because it's nice and open. If you want to make your way, just let me know when you're close and I'll pull out. Copy that, no problem. Oh, this is so incredible. It really, really doesn't get better than this. They are making a noise. They are making their little cub calls very, very faintly. I just heard one now. Oh! <laughs> Poor mom. Isn't she so incredibly patient with them? <laughs> Those teeth are sharp. <laughs> Lisa, while we watch them, wanted to know what their chances of survival are, which is of course the question on everybody's mind. It's oh, battering each other. This is where it does actually become important in terms of the sex ratio and whether they're males or females. Because around up sort of their first year, the cubs' chances whether they're males or females are exactly the same. And depending on the area, the other lion concentration on a number of circumstances, you're probably looking at an average of about 40 to 50 percent mortality. After that, after about a year old, if the cub is a male, things change dramatically because, of course, then at some point in the next year and a half of their life, they're going to have to go off on their own. So between two and a half and three years old, they leave the safety of the pride, and a young male is much at much higher risk than a female. <laughs> I've got my tongue back. The bush is full of toys, if you know where to look. <laughs> this is so cool. <laughs> the sage, they couldn't be more cat-like if they tried. That's so awesome. Now we've got to hope that in terms of the survival chances of these cubs, if the Birmingham boys stay in power, then their chances of survival are much, much higher than they would be if another <laughs> male takes over. Oh, shame, leave your poor mom's cheek alone. No wonder she was desperate for a break the other day. Just constant nipping teeth and scratching claws. <laughs> and of course that does then beg the question, do lion moms leave their cubs alone for more or less time than leopard, leopards leave their cubs? Safari Dean? Um, lionesses probably leave their cubs for slightly less time, but I don't think there's there's a huge amount of difference. <laughs> Pounce. Oh, all over mom 
Adam's face. This, you see what you see what we mean about lion cubs playing? It's just constant. Unless they are sleeping or feeding, there's this sort of a constant little lion cub puddle. Nipping teeth and waving paws. And any positively any movement is pounced upon. You know, I think James might be right. I think lion cubs might actually be the cutest thing, cutest baby animal. No, I'm only saying that because I'm watching them. Oh, but they really are just so tiny. Ah, there we go. I've got my dung ball. I've hunted a dung ball. And I've caught it. Oh, but actually, whatever my siblings might be doing, might, maybe not, maybe not more interesting. Grr. I'm a fearsome predator, and I'm not to be messed with. Oh, I've got Mom's tail. One's got a pile of elephant dung, the other one's got Mom's tail. Now, of course, you can't really see exactly how big these cubs are. And Margaret in Kansas, with pleasure, I can give you a size approximation, although she's doing it beautifully, oopsie, for you. Where's Mom going, guys? Are you going with her? I wonder where she's off to. I think she's probably just going to lie down. But we're not, obviously not going to try and follow her. Definitely not going to be bashing through. This is such a perfect cub spot. Look how beautiful it is. So many sandy places and crevices where she can hide her cubs. Absolutely awesome. Um, so size approximation, sorry, yes. They're about yay long and about yay big. So they're shorter than a house cat in terms of size. They're probably bulkier, they're, they're stockier, but your average house cat is actually much taller than those cubs are now. Uh, that gives you a rough idea. They're about the size of, I cannot think of, think of a, a two kilogram bag of potatoes. Sort of. So a five pound bag of potatoes. I can't, for some reason I went blank there. I can't think of a good comparison. I just want to see what she's doing. I don't think she's come to the opposite side of the drainage line. Let's just go forward a bit because we are going to have to leave soon. The other vehicle is on their way. So while we reposition, let's go and find out how jealous James is. James is very, very jealous and very cross and doesn't know really what to say.